Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. And today we are doing this question called the maximum subarray, which is quite a challenging question actually. Like I think we are stepping into the hard category questions now. And this question specifically is uh, something that I feel is very popularly tested. And it's quite a fun question as well. So I'll just condense what they expect us to do. It's a very simple idea, but the, the logic to solve it is not very straightforward. So basically they will give us an array, like, and then we have, we have to create a function that would return two things. The first thing is to find the uh, maximum possible sum among like adjacent arrays. So we need to find a sub array of this big array where we find the maximum sum. And another thing is to find the maximum possible value of all the items over here, which means just add all the positive values over here, two, three, five, 10. A sum of all this will give us the maximum value. Well, to find the maximum sub array, we need to take these into account, like two, three, five, minus four, five, and 10, which would give us 16. So yeah, that is the question. So how do we approach this? So a main thing to consider in these kind of questions is, have we considered all the possibilities? So straight out, out of the testing, we can first think of a possible situation where all numbers are negative, like negative one, negative two, negative five, negative six, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, negative seven. In this situation, um, the ma maximum possible sum would just be just this. And the maximum possible subarray, sorry, subarray would just be this. The maximum possible uh, subsequence would just be also this. We just get the maximum value out. And that's what we need to return. We cannot leave without choosing it. We, like we cannot just say zero. So that's a consideration we must take note of. Another thing that we must consider is like if the negatives on the side or if the negatives on the middle, so basically negatives are being an annoying piece of bad thing. I guess I could say it, but yeah. Anyways, in that kind of circumstance, how do we approach this question? So I'm going to go through my solution, like just verbally first, and then I'll jump into coding. So my solution is, let's take that example that they've given, minus one, maybe this is too dull. I'll just clear all drawings. I'll use this. So we have minus one two, three, minus four, five, and 10. So what I, I want, what I'm looking to do is, basically I'm trying to create, a, let's say max conj, like adjacent values. Okay, let's just say maximum adjacent. At the end of the day, I'm gonna return this maximum adjacent and I'm going to return a maximum, uh, anywhere, max any. So max any would just need to keep track of all the positives and just sum them together. And max adjacent would have to find a subsequence such that it fits the bill. So starting out, I'll just have both of these pointing to minus one. So it'd be minus one and minus one. Let's just ignore the any for now because it's slightly simpler. Let's just focus on the adjacent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep checking one thing and only one thing at first. I'm gonna see if this value, uh, sorry, I'm gonna see if this value is better or if this value is better along with the previous one. Is this better or is this better? And I'll, and I'll keep the maximum of these two, these two options. So in this condition, in this case, let, let's create a new variable called current max, car max. This will this will be two. And then I'm just going to update this to be two. Next up, current max, I'm going to check again. Is this value better or is this value better? So two plus three is better, so it'll be five. So current max will now be five. And maximum will compare whatever maximum it has, two versus current max, and five is much better, so it'll be five. Now here comes the, the tough one, not a tough one, but here comes the change in uh, logic. Now we will compare again. Is this better or is 
this better. Like Carmax is just five. It's not three or two. It's five. So is five better or is, is five minus four better or is minus four better? So the truth is the one with minus four is better. So it'll be one, but max adjacent, uh, max adjacent is still like it has five. We are going to see if this is bigger or car max is bigger. Whichever is bigger, we will store that as max, max adjacent value. So five versus one, five is still bigger. So five will remain as the maximum. Car max will just be one. We will just keep track of the highest for now. I mean, whatever current max is right now. So car max right now is one. Let's see again, five better or five with one is better. Five with one is better because it gives us six and six is higher than even max adjacent. So this will be replaced as six. And we see again, is 10 better or is 10 together with everything better? 10 together with everything is better, which is 16 and 16 is bigger than six, hence max adjacent becomes 16. So that is the logic behind finding, uh, finding this thing. What is it? What do they call it? Maximum subarray sum. That is the tricky one. Now, the less complicated one, which is max any, which is just finding any positive value, we just add them together. The idea is simple. We compare, we traverse through the whole thing. We keep a max any function. So max any, we just keep track. We just add something together. Plus equals maximum zero or whatever the item is. So if the item is negative, we will add a zero, which is effectively nothing. If it is positive, we just add it into max any because we would just want the maximum items. But here's the trick. I mean, not the trick, but here's the, I, I need to find a word for this. I'm struggling. Help me, let me know in the comments if there's any word that fit the, what I'm trying to achieve. What if all the values are negative? Here's the, the clang, here's the hammer, here's the anchor in the question. No, here's the, problem in the question. What if all the values are negative? Then our max will be zero while item will be negative. So max any becomes zero, which is not true because we cannot have a zero when there's no zero in the whole thing. So what we need to do is we need to have a conditional split for cases whereby the first element is negative. Like let's say the first element here is negative. In that case, I'm just going to keep continuing until I find a bigger and a bigger uh, item than this until I reach a positive sign. Once I reach positive, I start doing this. So that's the idea. Okay. So simple enough, but as in the, the logic is not simple, but the coding is just, just going to be a translation of whatever this is. So let's start coding this out now. So I need to keep track of three variables, max adjacent. Uh, max any and car max. And all of them will be a zero. I'm going to use a. So with that, okay, maybe I should buy more space. Okay. Nope. Nope. Okay. So after this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to travel. I'm creating a for loop. For i in range length uh, a, I'm not going to put, I'm going to put one over here because we have already traversed through the first item through this. So one all the way to the end of the items. So I'm just going to have store this into an item variable because I don't want to keep typing a i, a bracket i. With that, let's do the first logic, which is car max should update by checking if the new item is better on its own of the new items better together as a group. So car max is equal to maximum itself and so not itself. Uh, is item better or item plus itself better? Well, Conj max, is that what I'm calling it? No, I'm not calling it conj max. I'm calling it max adjacent. Max adjacent will be maximum of itself, max adjacent, and car max. So if one versus five, uh, 
five is bigger, so car max will be rejected and max adjacent will remain as a max adjacent, just five. But the next step, which is five plus one, which is six, six is better than five, so this will update to be six. If I'm going too fast, please slow down. You can use the YouTube thing or let me know in the comments so that I can take note of where to explain better. Okay, anyways, after this, like this, these two lines of code are sufficient to fulfill one part of the question, which is to return the maximum subarray, uh, subarray sum. The next thing is, if, if we are doing the second part of the question now, if max any is lesser than zero, then max any will just be in a pursuit to find a positive value. So until then, I'll just try to find the highest value possible throughout the list. Like I'm not adding anything, I'm not subtracting anything. I'm just trying to find the next best negative value or the next highest value until I reach a positive. So that that will just be a like a something like this, max any. Oh no, 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 sorry. Any versus item. So there's no summing going on. It's just comparing the next item with whatever is the previous one. This is only if max, max any is a negative value. But if it is not a negative value, we can just uh, we can just have plus everything together. So plus equals to max item and zero. So if the item is a negative value, we'll just add zero, which is effectively nothing. And hence we achieve the effect that we want to achieve. And with that, we can return max adjacent followed by max any. And yeah, so this is my solution. Let's see if I make if it runs. Oh, if I made any mistakes. Okay, it works over here. Let's run this here. Wonderful. It passes all the test cases. So I'll clear the annotation. Uh, maybe I shouldn't. Uh, yeah, it's okay. I'll just clear the annotation. So yeah, there you go. There you have it. This is my solution for the maximum subarray question. It's a very popular question. It's like a, right in between the medium and hard section. This is the standard that you can expect for like a hacker rank interviews or like any kind of interview session. This is a really, really popular question to test. So yeah, uh, hope you guys enjoyed that video and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.